It is your Duke preview. We've dubbed this the CPR game. Got to have this one to revive the season. Got to have it. And maybe not this one, but you need a Duke game. And this is a perfect opportunity. We'll get into why this Duke game might actually be easier than the game at home to win. We'll dive into all that, all things Blue Devils, including a major injury for Duke that might make things a little bit easier for Syracuse. Who's got to step up on, bo on both sides? Prop shop, to bundles, digits, all that fun stuff is coming up next. <laughs> Locked on Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome in. This is the Locked On Syracuse podcast, Tyler Aki and Tim Leonard, the only place to get daily Syracuse podcasts, your team every single day here on the Locked On Podcast Network. We thank you for making us your first listen Subscribe to us wherever you get your shows. We're free and available on all platforms. That includes YouTube. Hit that subscribe button, like the video, all that fun stuff. And Tim, this is it. This is the Duke game. This is the one that we've had penciled in on the calendar pretty much since what? Colgate loss, maybe a, maybe the Georgetown loss. Like one of these you have to have at this point. Right. And for Syracuse, I mean, this is one of the few banner opportunities you have for a quad one win Syracuse right now with just one of them that could fluctuate a little bit with Indiana, but right now a firm one quad one victory at the moment. And this is one of your few opportunities left because even once you get to the ACC tournament, there's not going to be a lot of these opportunities to get quad one wins just because of the nature of the ACC right now. Yeah. Duke is the only team ranked in the ACC and that might change on Monday the way Miami's playing. We'll see, but it seems like Miami is still just strengthening its bubble case. If anything, right now, that's kind of the nature of the conference and we're getting a Duke team. That's trying to bounce back right after a, a rare loss for them. They did go on the road to Tallahassee, tough place to play lost in overtime, despite a late rally in that game. So that's the bad news is Duke is hungry and Duke's at home and Duke's a really good team. But the good news, I guess, for Syracuse is maybe, and you never wish for this, but maybe Trevor Keels is going to be limited or not playing this game because as of us recording right now, not a ton of updates, but it looks like it's a calf injury and he's kind of uncertain whether he's going to play on Saturday. Right, and Keels, I think, is one of those guys that could have been sort of a, a zone buster, too. I think he's sort of, because he's not like a, a typical three-point shooter, but I feel like he could have been some sort of facilitator for this team. Him, Wendell Moore, I think, is another candidate to be that guy in this game. But, no, that would be a huge blow. Remember, Trevor Keels was one of the guys who, right out of the gate in, in that Champions Classic game, he kind of took everyone by storm and had that fantastic performance. But... This is a Duke team, super talented. Again, we talked about this yesterday when we were talking about sort of the perfect rotations for Syracuse to throw at this Duke team. Like Paolo Bancaro and Mark Williams are going to be a problem. They are going to be a problem down low. You're talking about 6'10 Bancaro who can handle the basketball, can step back and shoot the three. He is a, a super imposing athletic figure. And then you've got the same thing in Mark Williams where basically all that except the not the three-point shooting stuff, but Mark Williams is a guy who – we saw how many lobs Auburn threw against this team. I know. I, was I think it could that. be very, very similar in this game. And if you're not shutting that down, it could be a very, very long afternoon. Yeah, and Auburn is one of the more talented teams, probably the most talented team Syracuse has faced so far this year because, mm -hmm. to me, Auburn and Villanova are the two best teams, but Auburn has an edge in athleticism and talent, and that was on display in that game at the Battle for Atlantis. So now you go up against probably the second most talented team, or even the most, depending on how you view Auburn versus Duke. Auburn's obviously playing better right now and has a strong case that they should have been the number one team in the country. But watching that game, it was sort of tough to watch the disparity in talent on the court. And Duke has dudes. And, you know, sometimes coaches make the joke of, are you a Jag or are you a dude? And mm -hmm. Jag standing for just another guy. And I think Syracuse has a lot of Jags, unfortunately, yeah. and Duke has a lot of dudes. So it's going to take quite the effort for the Orange to win on the road, but maybe they will be down one of those dudes or Trevor Keels will be playing, but not a 100%. I remember when they won in that Elijah Hughes game, they got some injury luck on their side. That right. was when I believe, who's the point guard? Trey Jones, I think, left. Trey it. Jones got hurt, and then was it Cam, Cam Reddish? Reddish? Cam Reddish yeah. missed the game. 
Yeah. So I think that's, you know, it's, you need that sometimes. And I also look at, well, Duke on paper is very good at not turning over the basketball and protecting the basketball. They're 11th in the nation on Ken Palm and turnover rate on offense. They have been bitten by the turnover bug at times. This Florida State loss, they're coming off. 15 turnovers, they forced just five. The Miami loss, the other ACC loss for them at home, 17 turnovers, just five forced. That was coming off a COVID pause of sorts, but that's where maybe you could get Duke as if the zone does its thing and forces some turnovers. And that's one of the things, when you look at a team's ability to take care of the basketball, you have to look at the whole arc of the season because – Sometimes you have a low turnover percentage, but it's because you are really good in certain games, but you're also really bad in other games. It can be one of those sort of roller coaster stats where, okay, you got to have to you kind of have to look at the game log as opposed to looking at a firm number when you're talking about turnovers. And I think the same thing for forcing turnovers as well. I, I look at it as it's one of those things where it can be game to game. And going up against a different scheme, albeit one that, that Duke has faced before, but you look at this Duke team, it's it's not a lot of familiar names, really. I mean, it's a lot of younger guys when you talk about Bancaro. We'll see what happens with Keels in this game. A.J. Griffin has started to put himself into the starting yeah, lineup, brother of, of former Syracuse player Alan Griffin. So maybe a little bit of revenge on the mind for whatever you think. What do we think? Is, is Alan given the scouting report to A.J.? I hope not. I, I don't think so. I he's only he's, a one-year guy he's trying to crack a G league roster or whatever he's up to. <laughs> that is true. Um, but yeah, th there's certainly going to be chances for this Syracuse team, but listen, if you don't take advantage of your chances against Duke, any lead that you may have or any little run that you are on will get shut down quickly because they are going to be that much more talented than you in this game. I mean, it's littered with NBA draft picks right now. That's what you're going up against. And you, the margin for error is very slim especially on the road, big time game at Cameron indoor. Like this, this is going to be one of those games where if you're Syracuse, you probably have to get out to your run early and then just win the battle of attrition the rest of the way. Yeah. And you brought up Wendell Moore earlier. He is one of the rare guys that has faced the zone a couple of times and he's mm -hmm. really taken a leap this year. He was supposed to take a leap last year. Didn't really pan out. Now he's done it this year, and well, Paulo Bancaro is definitely their most talented player. Trevor Keels might be number two in talent. Wendell Moore is also very talented as well, but he's maybe their best overall player, right? Like, he's super all-around in his game, and he could be a guy that at the free-throw line area can make the right reads, and he's a smaller guy to put there, but he can also face up and hit the jump shot, and sometimes it's those all-around players that really burn you, and he's a guy that I think could catch it and be the high guy that's passing to the low guy that's Mark Williams or Paulo Bancaro in the high-low lob situation. That's the part that really scares me, the high-low pass in this game. And for anyone that hasn't seen Bancaro play, he's pretty much been as advertised this year. And it sounds like a lazy comparison, but he really does play a lot like Carmelo when he was at Syracuse. Yeah. And I know I wasn't around for that, but just watching the highlights and seeing Carmelo's game now, there's been a lot of NBA draft gurus that have said Paulo could be like Carmelo when he gets in the league. Yeah. Doesn't that kind of sting a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> so here, here's one thing, though. When we talk about the Keels injury, one thing that happened with Duke, once Keels went out, which was sometime in the second half, they went zone. And against Florida State, that's going to work because Florida State isn't great shooting the basketball. Unless they play Syracuse, but yes. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> right. Um, the, the great slump buster. But against Syracuse, I don't know how much that's going to work if they go zone, because Syracuse can shoot the basketball very well, and this could be a, a nice little game, maybe even for someone like Cole Swider offensively. I think it's going to be an eyesore defensively for Cole and Jimmy and some of the other guys who have struggled on, on the defensive side of the ball. But offensively, this could set up nicely for Cole, Buddy, Joe, I mean, anytime you can get guys out of your jerseys, this Syracuse team is going to probably be in the running to score 80, 85 points. And you're probably going to have to do that against Duke because Duke is a great offensive team. And Syracuse really hasn't faced a ton of great offensive teams this year against with, with their lackluster defense. Yeah, eighth best offense, according to Ken Palm, 24th best defense for Duke. And Joe Girard, too, is another key in this game. He really struggled on the road when Syracuse lost 85-71 last year in Cameron. Don't think he scored in that game. He only played like 18, 20 minutes. 
and he struggled at times. I remember that Trey Jones at the start of that game that they won, he was picking his pocket. So he struggled at Cameron, a team that recruited him. He needs to play a good game, and that kind of holds true for every Syracuse game. If you get a good performance from Joe, it's a different Syracuse team. All right, so we will get into the prop shop as well as DeBundo's digits in just a second, and then, of course, give you our game picks for the week. But this is it. This is the putt to win the tournament. If you sink it, the championship is yours. But on your backswing, your hat falls over your eyes. Is this how you're running your business? Poor visibility because you're still relying on spreadsheets and outdated finance software to see the full picture you need to upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system to power your growth with visibility and control of your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more. NetSuite is everything you need to grow all in one place. And with NetSuite, you can automate your processes and close your books in no time while staying well ahead of your competition. 93% of surveyed businesses increase their visibility and control after upgrading to NetSuite. Over 28,000 businesses already use NetSuite and for the new year, NetSuite has a new financing program for those ready to upgrade at netsuite.com slash locked. So head on over to netsuite.com slash locked for the special one-of-a-kind financing offer on the number one financial system for growing businesses, netsuite.com slash locked. Getting into the prop shop here, and again, this is, this is a game for Syracuse. We've kind of talked about it. It's going to prop you up. Right, You need this game to sort of revive your season. I think both you and I are in the camp that this team is not going to the NCAA tournament barring miraculous circumstances. This is one of those miraculous building blocks, I guess you could say. A win on the road against Duke would go a long way. So getting back to last week, we each went dead even, three and three. Um, You hit on Buddy to lead the team in scoring, but unfortunately it's minus odds at this point, so it doesn't really do you any any big-time uh, right. <laughs> favors because it's just like winning any of the other ones you're not getting the the extra boost of maybe hitting a guy who can double your money up so but you went three and three i went three and three we both hit on the spread you hit on the total i did not so let's get into it we'll start with duke over under three uh nine and a half three pointers made in this game so i think duke is due for some negative regression from the three-point line they're shooting it very well but going into the season everything you read about them was that was going to be a concern. And when you look at their roster, I don't think they really have the three point marksmen that they maybe have had in years past. It's a lot of really strong athletes, but maybe not the best shooters. And Bancaro is a guy that like he can shoot the three, but that's not the strength of his game. They did go 13 for 29 against Syracuse last year in Cameron in that big win from three. But I'm sort of banking on the fact that I think given that they make seven and a half per game and they don't shoot a ton of threes and they're due for some regression here that they will go under. I'll take the over here because Trevor Keels is out and he is not a good three point shooter. He sits at 30 percent, but he's taken about five a game. So I think those five attempts are still going to be sprinkled out and probably to a better three-point shooter. And even though, like you said, Bancaro is not a great three-point shooter, he's a solid one, 34%. Yeah. But I think that this is going to be – there's going to be open opportunities that guys like him make those shots. He's going to make those shots in this game. So I'm going to go with the over here on Duke's three-pointers. Who wins the rebounding battle? They did it again. They did it again, this time in convincing fashion too. Like this was a true dominance on the boards for Syracuse in that game against Clemson. But so they are now, what is it? Is eight and oh in the ACC. In seven and oh, I think. Seven and oh in the ACC. Uh, maybe and, eight and oh. Because they played no, seven eight. and oh. They're three and four. Seven and yeah. three and four. Okay. Seven and oh in the ACC in rebounding, uh, in winning the rebounding battle. Who's going to win it this time? Are you going to ride with the trend or is it finally going to be broken? You know what? I'm finally going to take Syracuse. This means they're finally going to have their their streak snap. So I apologize to all the fans. But looking at the numbers here, did you know right now Syracuse number one team in the ACC in offensive rebound rate? Never would have guessed that would that make going sense. into the season. That I mean, would it make makes sense, sense based yeah, on the the recent games. But I guess they have size, and I guess this year's team is just going to be better at rebounding than other years. And Duke allows a lot of offensive rebounds. They're 12th in the ACC in defensive rebound rate. Florida State had 19 offensive boards against them. They got out-rebounded by Florida State, who Syracuse has out-rebounded twice now. I really think that this is a game where Syracuse has got an opportunity to win the offensive boards, and that's how you upset a team. That would be huge if they could get some turnovers and offensive rebounds to create some extra possessions. 
Yeah, I'm going to roll with you here. I mean, Duke's not a great one. I, I do think Paolo Bancaro is going to get his from an offensive rebounding standpoint. I think he's going to create some havoc that way. But I think overall, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to keep riding the trend because at this point, you can't ignore it. You can't ignore it. Like going 7-0 and in rebounding margin in the ACC. Say what you want about the ACC, but going 7-0, and like that's something that's at least good out of this team. So I'll roll with it for, for what it's worth while we're still doing it. Oh, boy, this one's fun. This, or, <laughs> or maybe not so much. Jesse Edwards over under four and a half fouls in this game. Yeah, I almost want to say let's not set the the number, but like the minute that he fouls out. Yeah, like, are you see, like, so sad, we'll, we'll do though. both. We'll do both, but okay. four and a half fouls. I mean, I guess he'll foul out, right? Like, why would we bet to. otherwise at this point? It feels inevitable. I will say, when Syracuse wins at Cameron, they get a big game from a big, right? Like, yeah, Shuku had a huge game. I think it was mm -hmm. ten points, like eighteen, nineteen rebounds when Syracuse yep. won there. Not that long ago. And then Tyler Roberson had the this huge game where he was dunking on people and had 14 points, 20 boards. And that was their two wins at Cameron have come from huge games and they're big. So maybe Jesse's the X factor. Maybe that's the key to winning this game. But I just don't really see him staying out of foul trouble when Mark Williams is out there, when Bancaro's out there. And I really think Duke is not going to settle for threes and just try and pound it inside. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think that this is a matchup nightmare for Jesse Edwards. That's why yesterday I was advocating on the show, get Barama out there, if for no other reason than to absorb a couple fouls that Jesse would have taken. If for no other reason. Like, Barama, I, if he goes out there, plays five minutes, picks up three fouls, I think that's actually a successful day for him. Like, And I say that not sarcastically. Like, I think that's a successful day because it's going to allow Jesse to not pick up those two, three fouls that he might otherwise out there on the floor. So as long as he's not getting killed on the offensive end because of the fact that he's not nearly the offensive player that Jesse is, I think I wouldn't mind seeing Brahma go out there, absorb a couple fouls, Frank go out there, absorb a couple fouls, just so you can maximize Jesse's ability out there but i'm with you i'm gonna take the over it's it's sad and it's unfortunate but this is a matchup nightmare because ban is gonna attack him mark williams is gonna attack him and i don't think jesse's gonna get the calls on the other end to get a guy like mark williams in foul trouble mark williams is one of the best shot blockers in the entire country right now as is jesse edwards but mark williams i don't think has nearly the the same foul issues that uh that jesse edwards has so when will it happen i think that's the better question like what point of the game or what minute Jesse's out there? Let's go minute Jesse's out there. Uh, I'll say like 23, 24 minutes, somewhere in that time period, because I think he mm -hmm. fouled out against Wake in 20 minutes. That was a pretty quick one, but mm -hmm. he doesn't play more than 30, 35, and usually he fouls out before he can finish up those minutes. Yeah, I was going to say like 28. I think he can get okay. to 28. If they if they use rotations the right way, but that might be too big of an ask. But I'll go with twenty eight here. Um, all right, Benny Williams over under seven and a half. Are we going to see the lone five star on this roster go up against a roster full of them? I'm going to take the under here. Unfortunately, I took the over last week at the same number. He played five minutes against Clemson. I just don't really see why Jim Beheim would you know, pick, but there's been no rhyme or reason to it. So maybe I'm just reverse jinxing it here, but I'll take the under. I'll go with the over just because I think Syracuse is going to realize they need athleticism. Like, I think this could be a game where we don't see a lot of Jimmy Bayheim, And I think that would probably be the thing that's best for Syracuse because I don't think his shots are going to work against a Mark Williams. And I also think defensively, it's just, too tough for him to be able to go up against a lot of these guys. So I'm going to take the over. I think Benny's going to actually see some significant run in this game. All right. Who's going to lead Syracuse in scoring on the road at Cameron indoor. Sometimes you see the, the unheralded stars come out as we've kind of mentioned, like the, the Tyler Robertsons, the Pascal Chukwu's who will lead Syracuse in scoring in this game will be buddy minus minus one thirty, Joe Girard plus two fifty, Jimmy plus 300 Cole Swatter plus four fifty, Jesse plus five thirty. Or if you're going into the bench, you can get any of the guys at plus a thousand. I'll take Jesse. I'll reach for that big game from a big, maybe. I think it's really realistically going to be Buddy. And it's hard not to pick Buddy every time because it feels like that's the way we're trending here. 
And that's why I even made his odds even tougher to 130. So because of that, I'll just reach for the the fun bet here and go with Jesse at plus 530. I'm going to go with Joe at the plus 250 because if this team, this Duke team goes zone, I think that helps out Gerard. And like, this could be a game for Joe where he goes like six of 10 from three. You like love picking be, Joe in these. I, I love like. picking Joe. Everyone, And yeah. I don't think I've hit on it. And the games when he actually does, I I, I don't pick Joe. So we had in the Miami maybe, game. I remember that both of did us. Did I win that one? Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, we said that was a good bounce back spot for him. Um, but I, I'll take Joe, and maybe that's the wrong logic because he's coming off a good game, and rarely do you see two strung together. But <laughs> I think if he goes if he goes up against the zone, I think it sets up pretty nicely for him. Yeah, I just don't. I mean, maybe Coach Gay has thrown zone out there, but I don't see why they would do it in this scenario against a team that's so well equipped to play against zone and practices against zone a fair amount. All right, we will get into our picks for the game against the spread and the total. But first, we need to get you some more numbers. It's our guy, Anthony DeBundo from the Action Network. Follow him on Twitter at Anthony DeBundo. He gives you the latest with DeBundo's digits. The numbers you need to know. Anthony DeBundo breaks down the biggest stats for this week's Syracuse matchup. DeBundo's digits. On the Locked On Syracuse podcast. I'll just stand a Where you at? Let's go. The biggest battle here comes down to transition, where Duke loves to get out and run, ranking 85th in transition frequency. Syracuse defense just 260th nationally in defensive transition shot quality. So it's critically important that the Orange make the Blue Devils play in the half court where they are generally less efficient than when they can run. The Blue Devils rank just 292nd in percentage of shots coming from the three-point line against average opponents. They don't like to shoot threes too often, according to Haslametrics. The zone could force them into shooting a little bit more than they're comfortable from beyond the arc. The Blue Devils do like to live both in the mid-range and in the post, and they are highly efficient at both offensively. So Syracuse will need to improve on its defensive finishing at the rim shot quality allowed, which so far this season in conference play has been dead last. Uh, This game is actually somewhat similar to Virginia Tech's recent trip to Duke in December, matchup-wise at least. Virginia Tech, an elite jump shooting team. They run a lot of ball screens. They have good spacing. That's similar to Syracuse, who ranks number one in the ACC in spacing, number one in creating good shots off of ball screens. Virginia Tech actually led that game at halftime at Cameron Indoor, but Duke upped the ball pressure in the second half. They turned over Virginia Tech a lot. They got out in transition, and they went on to win by 12 points. The Hokies play better defense than the Orange, too, but there are some reasons to think that Syracuse could use the Hokies' offensive game plan to take advantage of an occasionally leaky Duke defense in the half court. A.J. Griffin has actually been inserted into the starting lineup the last three games to help improve the defense. That's brother of former Syracuse guard Alan Griffin. He's making 44% from three, too, so that's going to be the number one focus of the Syracuse 2-3 zone in this game. Another major, major red flag for the Orange, they are the worst defense in the ACC against looks at the rim this year. I don't really blame Jesse Edwards for this as much as I blame the rest of the zone and the lack of support that he has had uh, in protecting the rim. Syracuse defense has been eight points better per 100 possessions when Samir Torrance is in the game over Joe Girard. They've also been 12 points better per 100 possessions when Benny Williams is in the game defensively instead of Jimmy Beheim. So you're seeing what you guys have been saying on the podcast The defense has been better, but they are sacrificing some offense. The offense has been five points worse when Benny Williams is on the floor per 100 possessions compared to Jimmy Beheim. There are still plenty of noise in these stats, and the samples are pretty small. So I would like to see some three-guard lineup looks and some Benny Williams as well, and this could be the chance for them to really improve defensively against an elite Duke offense. Ken Palm gives Duke an 88% chance to win. Projected score 85-73. Bartorvik has the Blue Devils at 86%. Shot quality has them at 84%. All pretty in unison that this should be a double-digit Blue Devils win. Duke's biggest problems defensively have come in games when they have not been able to turn over opponents. The last two losses to Miami and Florida State, they had their worst turnover percentage forced all season. 7% against both. That makes Joe Girard's ball security extremely important against the Duke ball pressure. If they turn it over and they let Duke run, this could get ugly quick. 
But if they do not turn it over and they make their shots from the perimeter and make Duke play in the half court, this should be a competitive game unless Duke goes nuclear from three like they did in last year's meeting. Despite the excellence of this Blue Devils team, I'm actually pretty optimistic about the Orange's chances to keep this game competitive. Our thanks, as always, to Anthony DeBundo. You know, he texted us after uh, the uh, our last DeBundo's digits that we did. He says, I am so cold in NFL. Like, just fade me. Just fade me. I am, <laughs> I am down bad on the NFL right now. He won but on the Clemson game, though. He, he told did. Us, right? Yep. Yeah. He, he had that pick in very early. I think he got that game at three. And it ended mm. up going all the way up to three and a half. Um, but, yeah, no. So, We'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, again, we thank Anthony DeBundo. Check him out on the Action Network for all of his stuff. He actually he put out a video on the Action Network detailing that Syracuse-Clemson game. So you can follow all his work there uh, for all the latest betting advice as well. We will pick the game against the spread as well as the total. That's coming up in just a second. But first, Bet Online would like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue our march to the playoffs and beyond. Bet Online remains the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action for 2022. New year and a new updated desktop and mobile website. So sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code locked on to get started from football to basketball, hockey, boxing, UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2022. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports and use our promo code locked on. That's locked on all one word for a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online is where the game starts. So recording this a little bit early and we don't have the bet online number yet, but we'll go according to the Ken Palm projections here. Kenny is picking an 85 to 73 Duke victory. So we'll call that a 12 point spread and a total of 158 in this game. Where do you sit on Syracuse and the number 12? Can they cover it? I don't think they have really much of a chance of winning this game. It would take something pretty unusual. It would take probably Jesse Edwards going off, staying out of foul trouble and, you know, just things aligning like they have when they've gone down to Cameron in the past. And it would be kind of a classic Syracuse really back in win. But I will take Syracuse to cover just because I think, you know, the way that Syracuse matches up against Duke, their ability to get some offensive rebounds, which is weird to say that I feel like Syracuse might cover because they have a rebounding edge against a tall and physical team like Duke. But I really do think they're going to be able to crash the glass in this game. And it's just if there's ever a time to go all out for every 50 50 ball, it's on the road at Duke the, to the point that if they got down 16, 18, at least I'm counting on the team that is still probably giving it its all to try and backdoor its way to covering that 12 number. Yeah. I'm looking right now at Duke and the ACC. I think they've only covered once, maybe twice. I'd have Hmm. to see an ATS in the ACC, but they get this is the the double edged sword of Duke being such a great team and the one carrying the mantle in the ACC right now. But you get everyone's every ounce of energy and, and effort because, like we kind of laid out, this is one of the few, if the only, quad one opportunity for some of these teams the rest of the way. You're going to get Syracuse's best go at it in this game. So I'm with you. I'll take Syracuse to cover the 12. I don't think they're going to win the game, but I think they can cover the 12 just because you have the great equalizer of being able to shoot the three ball. And this is one of those games where if you can shoot well, you'll hang in it. But at the end of the day, Duke's probably talented enough or or has a a big enough talent gap where it's going to, it's going to hurt you and they're going to end up taking the game, but I'm with you. I'm going to take Syracuse to cover, but I'm not too confident in them winning the actual game. I think they'll lose by like eight or nine in this game. There'll definitely be some spread drama at the end, I think. Yeah, I could see that too. I think Syracuse gets off to a good start because that's what they've done in most of these Mm -hmm. games. And usually teams struggle at first when they go up against a two, three zone, then they get their feet sort of wet and figure it out. And I know Duke has a lot of experience against the two, three zone, but still you can't really rehearse it in practice until you're there playing against it. So I think that is a little bit of a factor. But once they sort of figure out the weak spots in the zone, because there are plenty of them, then I really am worried about Duke scoring from two point range because they are very efficient from there. They score a lot from there. Syracuse is very vulnerable to giving up two point shots and giving up field goals at the rim. And especially if Jesse gets in foul trouble, 
Then you're throwing out Frank Anselm, Brahma Sidibe, guys like that that just haven't played a ton of time. And Frank has stepped up in some moments where we've really needed him. So I'm not completely discounting him, but it feels like this is a game where Duke just pours it on inside. Then the other number we've got here, the total from Ken Palm is 158. I like the the over in this one. I think both of these teams are going to play in the 80s. I really do. And maybe one of them gets to the 90s too. So I'm going to go with the over. I'll go with the over too. I think the way that the offense played against Clemson, hopefully it isn't over because that makes it a little bit more fun to watch. And I could see Duke getting to 90, 95 points and just sort of carrying that mantle. Yeah. So high scoring. Syracuse can hang around. Probably not going to win this one, though. But you you need to have some sort of building block. You some Something positive needs to come out of this game. And even like a little victory, like Jesse Edwards not falling out to me in this game would be a big success, which as stupid as that sounds, you just need some of these little things. You need something where he can build a little bit of confidence off of that. But all right, that is going to do it for us on the Locked On Syracuse podcast. Duke coming up this weekend. We thank you for watching, listening, all that good stuff. We will recap the Orange and the Blue Devils next week on the show. Subscribe wherever you get your podcast. That includes YouTube. Hit that like button, all that stuff. Follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Syracuse. We'll be tweeting along with you guys on Saturday. For Tim, I'm Tyler. We'll talk to you guys next week.